when it comes to royalty, you can't have too many names. Dodge thought so in 1959, and the aristocratic sounding sobriquets they hung on their lineup. A jumble of coronets and lancers with the occasional royal thrown in for good measure could cause some confusion. They still can all these years on. That might explain why so many folks still incorrectly refer to the top shelf ragtop for 1959 as the Custom Royal Lancer Convertible, and not its proper name, the Custom Royal Convertible. Call them what you will, these were special cars, and when equipped with Chrysler Corp's stoutest D500 engines, these Mopars didn't just look busy, they got busy in a hurry. That's the engine that Sunstar has put under the pristine hood of this latest Platinum Collection model in Super D500 form. And there's a good chance the model around it is their best car yet. This outrageously good looking model is engineered, cast, painted and built better than any of this manufacturer's prior offerings, period. The casting is straight with no sign of a mold parting line, and the opening doors, hood and trunk are fitted tightly and evenly. Atop the poppy red over pearl white paint, the applied chrome, every single bit of it with no silver paint anywhere, is done in freestanding castings that mostly line up very well. A new generation of applied scripts for the Dodge lettering on the trunk and nose and the D500 emblems on the fins are in place. These are a huge improvement from the nerve testing peel them and die foils of releases past and should survive all but the most ham handed wipe downs. And you'll want to wipe the car down, trust us. After peeling the Klingon windshield protector, a nice idea that can be challenging to remove, we discovered lots of fingerprints and smudges on the chrome and the broad expanses of hood and trunk. Not to worry, these came off easily with a microfiber cloth and a dusting of detail spray. Once buffed, we were impressed by the great paint, the deep flashing on the bumpers fore and aft, and the intricate photo wedged grille set into the old Dodge's face. The headlights and general lensing, a real strong suit with these cars, is deep, clear and believable, and the whole show, riding on wide whites with great Lancer wheel covers, is pure 50s joy. The tritone interior is equally well done. Above a deeply flocked black floor replete with rubber mats, the seat backs tilt, as does the armrest a bit, and the front seats swivel to the side. You can also position the sun visors, but the real fun here is just looking at the thing. The red, black, gray, and chrome colors and patterns are nearly hypnotic, and the dash wearing waffled chrome, a push-button trans cluster, and readable gauges looks like something from a fighter plane. The show of force under the Dodge's real hinged hood is rendered in a slew of soft vinyl, sharp plastic, and several tight, neatly painted and assembled castings. On the passenger side, there's a washer fluid bag. Attached graphics on the front air cleaner on the Mighty Mills valve covers join in to top the 345 horse D500 off beautifully. And though the twin carbs do look blocky, there's a heck of a lot going on under here, especially for the price. Trunk's got a couple of good things going for it too, with a fabric boot dangling behind the seat back and a fuzzy floor onto which a full spare has been placed. Follow the trick aftermarket exhaust tips down to a chassis built off a huge, complex rails and floor matrix with added suspension bits front and rear. Both ends are spring loaded, and though they aren't as complex as some scale suspensions, who cares? The separate exhaust, full on drive line, and a more than respectable set of tires at the corners makes the undercarriage worth a look. You know, we've spent a lot of time talking about this lineup, and the conversation always seems to come back to bang for the buck. Were these Dodges selling for half again with their fetching, we'd still consider them a very good deal. At their sub $100 price point, Sunstar's fine, thinned 118th Mopars are downright princely, and they're highly recommended. For Diecast X Magazine, I'm Joe Kelly Jr. We'll see you on the shelves.